Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your JCT broadcast of tonight. We are at Jesuit Sprunk Stadium, where Jesuit faces off in its second consecutive game versus the Glencoe Tide. Tonight, starting for the Crusaders, batting lineup, third baseman first, number 16, Matthew Colas. Number two, in the order, number six, second baseman and shortstop, Tommy Kempf. Third, first baseman, Colton French. Fourth, number 15, Teddy Ferguson. In fifth, the second baseman, number nine, Matthew Young. At catcher, six in the order, number 11, Thomas Vickers. Left fielder, number five, Danny O'Reilly. Number eight, center fielder, Drew Hallett. And finally, number 20, the right fielder, Jack Gordon. And for Glencoe Tide, we first up, Dakota Ice Tides. First baseman, Ben Kemper. Second baseman, Jesse Wing. Uh, number 12, Gabe Garrison. Number 7, Jacob Weiss. Number 17, Cole Hoskins. Number 1, Jared Pinter. Number 4, Chaz Vaughn. And number 13, Gus Collins. First pitch is off by Eulen, called strike. Perfect straight pitch there by Eulen. Another one making contact there. Right into the glove of Matthew Young and an out at first. Tag there by Colton French and that's one out on the board for the Crusaders. Now up to bat for the Tide, Ben Kemper. Pitch left of the box. Pitch high, fouled left. Unreachable, but made contact with a car. Damage on whoever's car that hit. <laughs> There's gotta be a good insurance policy. Whoever it does say, watch out for flying balls here. Great hit down center field. They found the gap. Outfielder brings it in, but the hitter Number 11, that's Ben Kempfer, gets a first on base hit. Great job there by Kempfer to wait for first one a little outside of his range, and then that second one right down the middle, hit it with a sweet spot, deep center field. Low pitch from Euland, gets away with the strike. Tricky, tricky from Tanner Euland. for leading off the base. Makes contact, early bounce, catches it barehanded, fires to first, and that's an out. Kemper dies for a second and gets there. Well, the hitter gets out, unfortunately, for Glencoe. Yep, one runner on second. And now up to bat, that's number 12, designated hitter, Gabe Garrison. Pitches off inside. Kemper hesitant to leave second. Takes a lead. Diving over, slides in. Safe. Kemper's not going to get away easy with that one. Eulen's wanting to keep him honest there at second. Two zero count. Kemper leading off again on second. 
He releases short pitch. Looked like prior to contact with the bat, hit himself in the foot. That's frustrating, but you don't see that every day. Yeah, players don't generally hurt themselves with a, a baseball bat. And I don't think I don't think you get a base for that. I don't think you do. Unfortunately, it's going to be an uncomfortable at bat. Garrison hit right to Colas. Colas fires to first. Out at first, and that's three. Kemper reaching third. But that won't do the tide much. That's a quick three and out. Jesuit coming up for their first at bat. Now joining us, baseball aficionado Jack Foch. Jack, how's it going? Fantastic. Great day for baseball here at Sprung Stadium. How's it going, Jack? Good. Refreshing. Happy to be in the box. Exactly. Like you said, beautiful day for baseball. And a beautiful first uh, defensive possession by Jesuit. Quick three and out there, only allowing one man to get on base. Euland displaying pretty impressive pitching so far. And pitching today for the Glencoe Tide for Chaz Vaughn. And first up to bat for the Crusaders, Matthew Colas. Bottom of the first and their first at bat. Looks to start things off here for the Satyrs. Let's see if Jesuit can get off to a good offensive start early. Vaughn delivers his first pitch. Two straightforward pitches. Those seem like pretty good pitches if you're Colas. Another one right down the middle. Colas takes advantage of that one. Dead sprint to first. Not in time. They'll get him out at first. Nice job there by the shortstop to get that. That bounce right off the turf. It's a little different playing on turf than grass, so nice job there for Glenn Kelly adjusting. And something I noticed from Vaughn just in his first uh, pitching display, he's, he's just pitching straight. I mean, these are balls that batters dream of, and he doesn't look like he shows any signs of switching it up. So this could be Jesuit's day in heaven. Tommy Kempf getting a little taste of the, the magic there. Inside, just avoiding the left elbow of Tommy Kempf, which would have guaranteed a base. Easily one of Jesuit's more confident hitters. And if Glencoe's done their studying, they should be afraid when Tommy Kempf steps up to the plate. Those are two pitches kind of inside. So Vaughn might be trying to get Kempf, back him off the, back him off the plate a little bit. Kemp gets a hold of that one, high and deep. 
by just short, and the outfielder quick to come up and grab it. But both of Jesuits' two first batters making contact. And if you're Coach Griffin, you got to be happy with that. For sure, it's a good start to get some get some wood on the bat, wood on the ball. Excuse me. Inside, Colton French somehow avoiding contact, almost beamed with the ball there. Again, another inside pitch. Curious if Vaughn is trying to back off the jet. Colton French gets a piece of that one. Flies backwards into the top of the net. 1-1 one, one count. Bottom of the first. Another inside pitch. That makes it a 2-1 count. Colton French gets a hold of that one. Deep right, and it'll sink. Colton French, an easy trot over to first base. And the first bait hit for, base hit for the Crusaders today. Good effort there by Jesuit, or excuse me, Glencoe second baseman, Jesse Wing, to dive out for that ball just short. Yeah, he spread out for that one. Looked like there was some miscommunication between him and the outfielder leading to a last-second panic dive for the ball and not a very positive outcome. Jesuits got a man on first. And at bat now for the Crusaders, number 50, Ferguson. Vaughn continues to pitch straight down the line. Vaughn pitching slightly outside. Looks like he wants Teddy Ferguson to reach for that ball. Looks like most of Vaughn's pitches are either going straight down the middle or left of the plate. So let's see if that continues throughout the game. And he fires it over to first. Colton French dive back. He's safe. But Vaughn's got to keep him honest. This is a fast Jesuit team, and they take advantage of some of these steal opportunities. That one high, 2-1 count. Nice job there by Ferguson to lay off the high, the high pitch. Ferguson gets a hold of that one. That makes it a 2-2 count, and the Satyrs already have two outs. Teddy Ferguson with a chance to change the momentum of the game here. Looked outside, but the ump saw a strike. So that's three and out. Wow, that, that sure did look outside to, to us, Jack. Yeah, you know, we're sitting at quite, a, quite an angle, so I don't know if we have the best perspective, but, you know, that's why they're down there and we're up here. Exactly. Jesuit field with a successful first, uh, first appearance in the outfield. Jesuit looking pretty good tonight. Tanner Ewan looks comfortable on the plate following Colton French's one hit one hitter uh, in their last matchup against Glencoe. And looks like we might have some sun. The clouds are shifting in our favor. That's for sure a good sign. Sun is always good for baseball. It never went rain. Absolutely. But, you know, it's helpful to have this turf field on rainy days, especially in an unpredictable state like Oregon. One of only two teams in, it's either Metro League or the state that has turf fields for baseball, and that's us in Sunset. So it's uh, really, really quite the benefit having that turf. And now at bat for the Tide. Jacob Weiss. That's a cool name. 
That is a cool Jacob Vias. Vice making contact. Fired over by Matthew Young out at first. And that's a strike via Tanner Euland. 0-1 count with one out. Outside. 1-1 one, one count. And that's Cole Hoskins at the plate. Another outside pitch. Contact down the middle. Grabbed by Matthew Colas and fired over. Scratch that Tommy Kempf making that play. Great heads up play by Tommy Kempf to scoop that and fire it over. For sure. Great throw as as Haskins. Is that right? Yeah. As Haskins looks pretty dang speedy over there. Yeah, you're right. It helps to have those athletic players. Playing up close, especially for Colton French, who makes your job a lot easier at first base, not having to extend when you have some uh, accurate throwers to assist you. Euland down the middle, gets some swinging. Great pitch by Euland. 0 2 count and two outs for the Tide. Good eye by the man at bat. That's number one, Garrett Pinster. Swings at that one, and that's a strikeout for Tanner Eulen. As the boys head back into the dugout, that's the end of the second. As we head into the bottom of the second, still zero runs. Both teams with one hit. Pretty even so far. That was a nice job there by Eulen to <coughs> get the quick, get some quick pitches, get some quick outs, not raise his pitch count too high. Right. Like you said, it's key. Keeping that pitch count low, Eulen's got to like to keep some speed under the ball, keeping Eulen on the plate as long as we can. And quick uh, innings like that really, really benefit Jesuit. Vaughn back on the plate, or back on the mound, and at the plate, Matthew Young. Young, quick contact down the line. That'll be left. Foul ball for Matthew Young. Pretty great hit, though. That's the kind of contact you like to see. Strike. Great pitch by Vaughn.
Ball good eye by Matthew Young. He's waiting for the pitch. Good job there by Matthew Young. <clears throat> As Vaughn tried to place the pitch a little outside to try and get him to swing and strike out. Another really tough swing. Young reached for that one. Young gets a hold of that one right over to the second baseman. Easy out at first. That's one out for the Crusaders. Stepping up to bat now. Catcher, Thomas Vickers. Hitting display by the Crusaders so far. I think every single player has made contact. No strikeout so far. Yeah, it's definitely a good sign for Crusaders, even though they're getting out early. Could come in help in helpful. Just game like games. that, Thomas Vickers, the spark of the game. He rounds first on his way over to second. He's got speed on his side. He'll stay. Great double there by Thomas Vickers. Getting a hold of that one, seeing the gap. Shot right between the right fielder and center fielder. Right where they couldn't get it. Nice job there by Vickers on that first pitch swing. With only one out, it makes Jesuit scoring that much easier. Yeah, I think we're starting to see a trend in Vaughn's pitching. Most of his primary pitches are right down the middle. He's pitching straight at first. Maybe seeing what type of battery he's going up against, seeing the reaction to those type of pitches. Thomas Vickers has seen enough batters go through so far. I think he was ready for that one. Danny O'Reilly, the left fielder, stepping into bat now. Gets a hold of that one. Deep center field. It's going to be catchable. The center fielder grabs it. And Thomas Vickers makes his way over to third. Great, great job there by Vickers on the tag up. Very smart baseball play. And the assist by Danny O'Reilly. For sure. <laughs> Stepping into bat now. Outfielder, Rue Hallett. Hallett's a power hitter for sure. If he gets a hold of that ball, he won't see it. A lot of upper body strength. Down the middle, that's an 0-1 count, and the Satyrs have two outs. Hallett making contact. With this 0-2 count, I wouldn't be surprised to see Vaughn try and pitch outside, get, get Hallett to swing. Good eye by Hallett. Staying in it. That makes the count 1-2. Crusaders with 2 be a key at bat with Vickers on third. A single or a double. Bring Vickers home. And Drew Hallett swings on a pretty outside pitch there, I'd say, and misses an opportunity to capitalize on that. That man on third. Tough. Crusaders have been put in multiple positions like that. Got to be able to finish.
Next up to bat for the Tide is pitcher Chaz Vaughn. First pitch right down the middle from Euland. Oh, Vaughn gets a hold of that one. Missed opportunity by Kempf, still gets it. Great throw there by Tommy Kempf, making up for that error. Quick to hop on the ball and fire it over to first. Nice job there by Kempf. Quick reactions as he saw that ball go on the ground. Way to pick it back. Throw it out to first. Top of the first. Top of the third, still zero runs for both teams. Low right from Euland. Gus Collins at bat. Winds up, foul right. 1-1 one, one count. Another foul ball from Collins. That makes the count 1-2 with one out. Catches him swinging. Strikeout for Euland. Two outs. Good job there by Euland to get that second out. That strikeout might bring up his confidence. Pitched a pretty good game already, but good confidence builder. Now up to bat, first in the lineup, Dakota Eichstadt. Fired down the third base line. Quickly picked up by Colas. That's a quick three and out. And that's the end of the top of the third. Still zero runs for both teams. Again, as I said earlier, another very quick inning of pitching for Tanner Euland. Definitely a good sign for the Crusaders. Jack Gordon with his first at bat. Gordon showed butt there on that first pitch. Let's see if he goes back to it. Looked like he was prepared to wind up that time. Makes the count 2 0. Third consecutive ball thrown by Vaughn. Good eye by Jack Gordon. 
waiting for a good pitch. And he'll walk Gordon. Four pitch walk there by Vaughn. Good, good job there by Gordon to keep his eye, stay disciplined at the plate. I'm not sure if Vaughn couldn't find the box or that was a purposeful walk. Gordon, a pretty good hitter. Jesuits first in the batting lineup. Matthew Colas revisits the plate. Fire to second. Gordon slides. Safe at second. Great play there by Gordon to hit the ground. For sure, and that <coughs> that most likely lets Colas swing away there on that on this next pitch. So good position for the Crusaders. Gordon with a confident leadoff. Colas fired out to center. Picked up easily by the center fielder. Gordon stays on second. But going back to that play by Gordon, just a little bit more his ability to hit the ground early with all that momentum, that disrupted the play at second. Both, uh, both the second baseman and shortstop weren't able to get good footing on the ground to make that play because Jack Gordon was already in the way. For sure, go player out there. Strike. Gordon once again. Hefty, hefty lead off. Off the plate, keeping Gordon honest. At this point, after Gordon stole first, you have to wonder if Gordon might be in Vaughn's head. Heads back. Deep center field drops. Perfect for Gordon. Man on first, man on third. Jesuit in a great position. Gordon didn't score there because he was a little hesitant. That ball looked like it could have possibly been caught. So as the ball dropped, he was about halfway to third, and Coach Griffin called him and told him to stay at third. Probably a wise decision there. And in a great situation like this with a man on first and man on third, who better to have at bat than Colton French? French is headed over to Dartmouth to play baseball for the green. High pitch. Tommy Kempf steals second. This only ups the stakes. 1-0 count and only one out. Jesuit's got to be feeling good in this position right now. No throw there by the catcher, so it looks like there was a little miscommunication between the second baseman and the shortstop. Colton French gets a hold of that one. Gordon's headed home. And Tommy Kempf rounding third. Well, two runs on the board for the Crusaders off the big power play by Colton French. Great piece of hitting there by French, but also another great, great effort there by Ike Stat. Yeah, placed that ball perfectly. Really broke apart the third baseman and shortstop, pinning it right down the middle. Colton French will benefit from the play as well. He's got a spot on first. Teddy Ferguson up to bat. Outside pitch, and French is stolen to second. Multiple again, bases stolen. Again, another Spurs. another no throw by Glencoe. Is, it seems like the second baseman and shortstop cannot get good communication on who's going to go cover second. And that's cost them on multiple occasions so far. Ferguson down the third base line. It'll be foul ball territory. He'll have to come back to the plate. 1-1 one, one count. Jesuit still with only one out, but adding two runs on the board. With the man in scoring position here for the Crusaders, Jesuit definitely wants to look to get try and get a single so that they can score the run. Deep single out to the outfield would be the ideal situation here for the Crusaders. Huge gap between the right fielder and center fielder.
outside pitch, easily seen by Ferguson. 2-1 count. Another outside pitch. French slides into the third, safe. Another stolen base by Colton French. That's two now. That's four stolen bases here in the inning for the Crusaders. So they're really showing off their speed here. Who's to say he won't steal home? I'd like to see it happen. Now that steal puts Jesuit in multiple. They have multiple chances here. Sacrifice fly would work as well as a single. It looks like the infield has come in. Another outside pitch walking Teddy Ferguson. And we saw a situation pretty similar to this a couple at bats ago, except Colton French was stepping up to the plate with a man on first and third. And the result of that was two runs. I'm hoping for a little deja vu. Again, it looks like the second baseman and shortstop do not have the right communication on who's going to cover second. Glencoe needs to figure that out or Jesuit will keep taking advantage of that. And that just adds on to the tally. Five stolen bases this inning. Like the infield and some of the outfield will come and talk to their pitcher. I think what Glencoe is trying to do here is figure out that communication so that the steals can... They don't Seize. allow any more steals, yeah. yeah. No, I, that is killing them. Jesuit making a lot of progress without needing hits. And Jesuit's hitting well. I mean, that's it's just a luxury that they're not making contact at this moment in time. This would be a whole different ball game. Hopefully Glencoe able to make those adjustments. Man on second. Man on third, just like last time. Hopefully Matthew Young can bring him home. One-o -oh count. Vaughn gets that one. As again, the infield has looks like the infield has come in, trying to prevent anything, trying to prevent the Colton French from coming in on home on an infield ball. Another strike delivered by Vaughn, one, two count. Young gets a piece of that one down the first base line. Be a foul. Jesuit still with only one out, not feeling any pressure at the plate. And with that nice two run lead, Jesuit's right where they want to be. Another foul ball from Matthew Young. He's staying in there. Young reached for that one. Good job there by Young to stay alive after he realized that ball was outside. So good job there to keep the contact to avoid the strikeout. One, two count, Young at the plate. Down low, that makes the count two, two. The ball from Vaughn. Griffin exchanging some words with Colton French. Talking about making the play to home. Vaughn delivers, 
Matthew Young again down the third base line. Foul ball, one after another. With all these foul balls, Vaughn's pitch count has to be getting up there. Another foul from Matthew Young. As you said, pitch count really getting up there. And it'll pay a toll on an athlete like Vaughn, especially because he tends to just pitch straight, and Jesuits challenging him at the plate. He's having to try to throw some tough pitches, which is probably wearing down that arm. Matthew Young, great hit. Picked up by the right fielder. Two men at home. That's two more runs for the Crusaders as they extend their lead to four. Fantastic. And just like last time, can I say it? Deja vu? Yeah, for sure. It looked like if the second baseman, they were they were in, in the infield a little bit. It looks like had the second baseman been playing a little more, a little back, just a little further, he, that play could have been made. So it was close, but it was a great piece of hitting for Matthew Young. Bottom of the third, Jesuit leading with a four run. Young steals for second, taking it in, and he gets there. Second baseman wasn't able to make the play. Positive sign there for Glencoe, though, as they finally had that communication figured out as second baseman went to cover second. Strike delivered by Vaughn. And it's Vickers at the plate. 1-1 one, one count. Vickers had a nice double earlier in the game. So with Young in scoring position, let's see if Vickers can have another good hit to produce an RBI. Ball making the count 2-1. Jesuit still with only one out. Another ball, 3-1 count. And another. As Thomas Vickers trots over to first. Two men on base, one on first, one on second. Vaughn has let this inning get away from him a little bit here, so let's see if Vaughn can maybe produce a double play, look for him to pitch low into the zone, so let's see if he can end this inning. Yeah, I think he's just trying to close out the third inning at this point, not give up any more runs, finding a way to survive. For sure. Strike. If so, I suppose that was seen on the far right part of the box. Vickers on first, Young on second. It looks like the Jesuit base runners are really in Vaughn's head, head as they should be, as they've stole, stolen quite a few bases this inning. Yeah, he's got a lot more to worry about than the man at the plate. And a great hit by O'Reilly. Sinks right in front of the center fielder. Fired. And now all three men on base. Bases loaded as Drew Hallett steps up to the plate. Coach Griffin was originally sending Matthew Young home, but good job there by Coach Griffin to realize that that ball was hit pretty hard, and center fielder got a good grasp on it. It was, had a pretty nice throw there in the, into the second baseman. Matthew 
Vaughn's pitch far right. Halleck gets a piece of that one. Foul ball. 1-1 one, one count. Base is loaded for Jesuit. Drew Hallett with an opportunity to make a power play. Pitch inside. 2-1 count. The last thing Vaughn wants to do is walk walk a run in, so let's see if he can get this, the count into his favor. Great hit down the third baseline. Foul. But a great athletic play by the third baseman. That was Cole Hoskins. For sure. Nice job there to lay out for that ball, even though it was foul. Shows that Glencoe's really put it in 100% effort in this game. Whether they needed to or not. Three, two count. Full count here for Drew Hallett, but only one out. Gets a piece of that one, barely. Drew Hallett keeping Jesuit alive. Two outs to spare, so if Hallett can't finish here, Jesuit has another opportunity. And in a great position with bases loaded. And it'll walk Hallett, and in comes Young. Force walk run. Now that's five total runs for the Crusaders as Jack Gordon steps up to bat. As Vaughn just walked in a run. Catcher goes out to meet with him, and Glencoe has got to be considering maybe changing their pitchers. Bases loaded once again. Gordon, hard hit, high center fielder, comes up to make the play, and he does, firing home. That's a great job there by Glencoe to not, not allow a run as a short infield or short outfield blooper hit by Gordon. Absolutely, and Glencoe finally getting their second out after nine consecutive at-bats. Not a great pitch there by Vaughn. He's been out there for a while and his pitch count really totaling up. Vaughn just trying to finish out the inning. He's got to be exhausted at this point. Allowing three runs this inning. 2-1 count with two outs for the Crusaders. Nice, nice job there by Vaughn to get back into the count. D did not want to make it 3-0. Gets bailed out there with the strike. 2-2 two, two count. If he can deliver one more strike, he can close out this inning. But Matthew Colas won't have any of it. Deep hit by Colas. And he brings in the runners. Huge play there by Matthew Colas. Deep single and adds two more runs onto the total. Jesuit with a seven run lead. Perfect hit there by Colas, right into the gap in left field. Couldn't be a better hit. Is there a rule about run limit for innings? I'm not sure. 
I'm sure Glenn could have slipped through the rule book right now, yeah, looking for, for any sure. chance to get bailed out. You have to wonder why they haven't made that substitution for Vaughn. Yeah, my guess would be that they're trying to let Vaughn finish the inning, pitch a good three innings as his pitch count has gotten up there. So, wouldn't be surprised to if this were her last last inning. Cola steals second. Easy, gets there almost seamlessly. Once again, you saw that miscommunication. Catcher not able to make the play to second. That's a total of nine stolen bases this inning. That's we got to be creeping up on a world record. Yeah, I've never seen that many stolen bases in one game. Or in an inning. Yeah. And there it is, the third out. Vaughn finally able to close it, allowing five runs in the third. Good job there by Ike Smith to get that ball and finish off that inning. You think Vaughn's excited to get back in the dugout? I'm guessing he can... Probably has some time to think about it, which could be a positive thing or it could be a negative thing. It could get into his head a little bit. So if Vaughn does come back out, I'm excited to see how he reacts. Tanner Eulen, the pitcher for Jesuit, definitely had a nice rest. Able to relax his arm and get a little refresher before coming out. Enough time there, kind of like having a substitution. Again, that can be a positive thing, but it also could be a negative thing as you give him time to think about it and his arm cools off a little bit. So and it'll be interesting to see how he reacts here on the out on the mound. With a pretty hefty lead, I'm sure he can pitch with confidence. It's important not to allow, you know, Glenn Coda sneak up on you, but... I don't know if they're necessarily one of those teams, but it's important not to give up any runs or give the other team leverage at this point in the game. Now at bat, Ben Kemper. Ben Kemper made a pretty big impact in the first inning. The only hit for Glencoe tonight. Right back at it. Makes contact. Foul far left. Pitch outside by Euland. 1-1 one, one count. Beans him. And he'll walk him. Kemper makes his way back on base. Good job there by Kemper to take the hit. The pain might be there for a couple minutes, but it's definitely worth it for your team. And with zero outs and a man on first, definitely a good situation for Glencoe. Jesse Wing at the plate. Good eye by Wing. Great pitch by Euland. Wing just gets a piece of it, making the count 1-1. One, one. Another foul by Wing, making the count 1-2, zero outs for Glencoe. Look for Eulen to pitch low into the zone to try and force a double play here. Quick throw over to first, keeping Kemper honest. Great pitch by Euland. Catches wing swinging, and that's a strikeout for Tanner Euland. 
A job there by Eulin to get that strikeout. Makes a double play to end the inning situation, so look for Eulin to aim for a double play. Designated hitter, Gabe Garrison at the plate. Quick to swing at that one. Great pitch by Euland. Another empty swing by Garrison. Euland so throwing some great off-speed pitches to get the Glencoe batters to swing, so... Let's see if that continues. Euland attempting to put a fastball in there, catching Garrison off guard, but wasn't able to place it where he wanted. One, two count. Oh, looked like a great pitch there from Euland. Ump didn't see it. Making the count 2-2, two, two. man on first. Looked as if that pitch was just on the edge of the outside, just on the outside of the zone. So, good pitch there by Eulon. Got to keep throwing. That one definitely outside. Making it a full count, one out, man on first. Another ball, and he walks Garrison. Looked like he definitely had Garrison there with his first two initial empty swings. That's a great start there by Glencoe. Get two men on with Euland getting his pitch count, making Euland throw a lot of pitches. So definitely a good start for the Crimson Tide. Pitcher or catcher Thomas Vickers wants to grab a quick word with his pitcher. Jacob Weiss, center fielder at bat. Great pitch there by Eulen. I don't think I don't think Weiss saw that as a potential. Hittable ball. He sure thought that one was. Empty swing from Vice, making the count 1 2. Glenko with one out. Vice tried to hit that bar ball very hard, so wouldn't be surprised if Glenko is aiming for a home run, obviously, or a double or triple. He'll get a foul ball. Two men on base, one on first, one on second. Jacob Weiss at the plate. Great hit there. High, pop fly. Center fielder's dream. An easy play there for Drew Hallett. It's two outs now. Man still on first and second for Glencoe. And coming up to the plate, Cole Hoskins. Cole Hoskins with a good opportunity to keep Glencoe's hopes alive if he can get a good base hit here. If you're Glencoe, you definitely want to score that run on second base. Make it, even just make it a six run deficit. Off of an error, Glencoe able to advance that man to third. I'm not sure what happened with that throw from Vickers. More of a bounce pass. It looked like it just slipped out of his hand. So Vickers definitely had a chance to get him out at third. But like Jack said, it kind of like a bounce pass, and that does not work as well in baseball as it would in basketball. Eulen, tricky pitch. Sunk that one right at the bottom of the box. 1-1 one, one count, two outs. Two men on base. Cole Hoskins making contact. 
Foul ball down the third baseline. One two count. Gets a hold of it. Fired down the line. Play made at first. And finishing the top of the fourth. Glencoe still runless. Jesuit with a total of seven runs. Still a pretty hefty lead. Jesuit sitting pretty at this point. Good the job there by Eulin to get out of that jam there in the top of the fourth to keep his hefty lead. Yeah, that's right. Confidence able to catch up with Eulin as he looked like he was starting to pitch a little off. And looks like Glencoe will make that substitution in the pitching position. Now, Jack, if, if you're Glencoe and you're trailing by this many runs, what, what kind of adjustments do you think they can make best benefit their, their uh, play style? Well, they definitely got to limit their pitch count. I think with, uh, with that, the previous pitcher getting his pitch count up so high and having to exit the game pretty early, he's got to stop it, or the pitcher's got to control the ball and get some easy outs here to start the and get his confidence up. Colton French up to bat. High and outside. Not a great first pitch. Ooh, great play there by the shortstop. Pretty good heads up play by Colton French to get a hold of that one. But a quick reaction by number five. Make that catch. Great grab. First time up at bat tonight, number 24, Nolan McCarthy. Nolan McCarthy is the kind of guy you're afraid of when he steps up to the plate. At his first at bat this season, not only did he get a bat stuck in the cage, but he hit the game winning run. That was one of the most exciting baseball games I've been to, high school baseball games I've been to in my life. Great, that first game, great job by McCarthy to walk off the Crusaders. Good eye by McCarthy. 1-0 count with one out. Another Great look by McCarthy, not swinging at that one. Clearly he knows what his strike looks like. As you said earlier, McCarthy is kind of a pitcher's nightmare. V pretty pretty strong guy up at the plate, so. You don't want to get him a good pitch that he can, you know, find the sweet spot with because he'll take advantage of that. and You know, somebody over in Wilsonville will catch that ball. Suter able to deliver his first strike to McCarthy. 3-1 count. Swinging at that one. Ball looked high. 
full count for McCarthy as he faces the conclusion of his at bat. Let's see how he faces this one. McCarthy gets it. Short. Easy play to first. Second out for the Crusaders. Stepping up to bat now. Griffin Brandt for his first appearance of the night. Looks like with this lead, Jesuit getting some of their not uh, or inconspicuous players in uh, in at bat. That's definitely a good good time for the Crusaders so that they can get some of these young guys, both McCarthy and Brandt being juniors, get them some varsity experience. Soft pitch there from Suter. But clearly a ball coming in high over the box. 1-0 count. Inside pitch. Two consecutive balls from Suter. Two outs. Way outside. That's two, two batters in a row that Suter's got gotten into a 3-0 count, so Suter will try and throw a strike here and obviously a strike after that to strike him out, but not good for the Crimson Tide regarding pitch count. Grabs a strike there. This may be a reoccurring chain of events. Brant gets a hold of that one. Deep center. Easy play for the left fielder, trotting over and making the play. But a pretty good first at-bat by Griffin Brandt. Brandt really got to hold that ball, just right to the left fielder. Griffin Brandt following his hit. Now going to play some defense at the second base position. Jake Day out in center field. Jack Gordon out in right field. Danny O'Reilly out in left. If you're Glencoe here, you just want to get <coughs> get some base runners on. That's really all you're looking for right now. You're not looking for anything powerful. You're just looking to get some guys on base, get a run or two in this inning. And as my good friend Robin Lopez says, the Goonies never say die. So wow. Glencoe's got to have that type of attitude to come back into this game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we have any wishing wells around here. <laughs> Can check it out. Look into it. Garrett Pinster at bat. Pinster, short single over to Kempf. Easy play at first. Quick out at first. Pinster, easy trip back to the dugout. First pitch swing in there for the Tide. Nice job there by Ulan to get that easy out to start the, start the inning. Pitcher Jacob Suter at bat. The two pitchers facing off. Great pitch by Euland. 1-1 one, one count. And he's got that aggressive knee thrust before he pitches. Pretty intimidating. Easy play. 
Colton French. And Tanner Eulen trots over to first, tagging the runner out. Nice job there by Eulen to recognize that French was going to have to go get that ball. So good job there by Eulen of covering first for French. And Colton French appreciating the assist, acknowledging him with that friendly fist bump. Two quick outs. Eulen searches for the third. Great play by Colton French. And just like last time, French making the play. Eulen tagging at first. Three outs. Another quick inning there for Eulen. Eulen's pitched a wonderful game so far, allowing one hit as it came in the first inning. And just a great job there by Eulen. And starting the bottom of the fifth, Jesuit still with a seven run lead over the Glencoe Crimson Tide. Now, Jesuit pretty confident team this season for their last win, chanting, we want Bama. I think they got the wrong Crimson Tide. Suter on the mound once again. Vickers step up to the plate. Vickers, last two at bats successful, making his way on base. Nice job there by Vickers, keeping his plate discipline. Even though that was a high pitch, those pitches definitely, you want to swing at those. Gets a piece of that one, chipped off the top of the bat, back into the cage. One one count, Suter delivers. High pitch. It looks as if that off speed pitch just got a little away from Suter up there on the mound. Getting a piece of that one once again. Suter, you're able to notice, not a very consistent pitcher. Just trying to throw heat at this point. Get it over the plate. Struggling with that quite a bit, but he doesn't have a consistent style. Huge hit by Thomas Vickers. Deep center. Easy pop fly for the center fielder. One out. Stepping up to bat. Looks like number 17, senior Robert Paquette. Something you wouldn't know about Robert, he's quite the history buff. Guy knows everything about all the world wars, civil wars, revolutionary wars. Just ask him. In his off time, he studies globes. Pitch there by Suter, making the count 1-1. One, one. Crusaders with one out. Two-one count. 
Judge Jordan has really shown some great plate discipline today, so let's see if they continue to do that towards the end of the game. Another high pitch. Suter in this 3-1 count situation once again. Robert Paquette gets a hold of that one. It's deep. Easy play for the right fielder, but a great first at bat by Robert Paquette. Really got a hold of that one. Good to see that contact there from Paquette, especially for just coming off the bench. And another first at bat, Mr. Jake Day. Jake Day spends his free time designing techno music. He's actually pretty talented. He's got a nice little desktop headphone speaker setup. Good eye by Jake Day. Talented baseball player. But when he's not on the diamond, he's in the, the laboratory making some funky beats. Sounds like the Crusaders have a variety of off-the-field hobbies that are very admirable. This is a very talented bunch. For sure. Straight down the middle. That's a single from Jake Day, the techno beat sensation. Jay Sean Callen up for his first bat of the night. We're seeing a pretty good performance from our bench players. If only the Portland Trailblazers had this kind of depth. Ref whipping out a notepad, either getting in a quick game of Sudoku or checking the player lineup. Oh, needs another break. Not quite sure what that was about, but <laughs> umpires have to do their jobs and they obviously do it right, so. Wild pitch by Suter. Easy trot for Jake Day to second base. For a relief pitcher, Suter's pitch count is definitely getting up there, so his arm might be getting a little tired causing that, that wild pitch. Looked like a pretty good pitch there by Suter. 2-0 count, two outs for the Crusaders. Steps off the mound. Another wild pitch. Jake Day slides into the third. And Jay Sean Callen takes first base. Again, with two wild pitches in that at bat, Suter's arm does look to indeed be getting tired. Matthew Colas at bat. Jesuits leadoff hitter. High pitch. Great hit from Colas. Right down the third baseline, just outside. That would have been huge. That was that was pretty close to the foul line, just drifting a little bit to the left. It's that slight wind. It's a killer. Ball. 
Another outside pitch, 2-1 count. Two outs for the Crusaders with two men on base. Count bumped up, 3-1. Foul from Colas, making it a full count, two outs. With the full count here, expect Jay Sean Callen to attempt to steal second with either a walk or a strikeout looming. Looks like the Glencoe fans just arriving. I guess it is quite the drive. Jay Sean Callen fooled everyone with that one. As a balk has been called on Suter. Jake Day trots into home. Adding in another run for the Satyrs. Coming off the bench. Putting runs on the board. That definitely might mess with Suter's confidence here with his pitch count getting up high. Looks like he's a little tired and now a balk. And with this walk, confidence might be getting a little low here. Jesuit extends their lead out to eight runs. Feeling good. As it looked like Suter just had a conversation with Glencoe coach from the mound. I'm not sure what it was about, but. Now, if you're Glencoe, you just want this easy out. End the inning as soon as possible. Don't want to allow Callan to score to extend the lead to nine to nothing. Great hit from Tommy Kempf. Easy play to first. <coughs> Closing out the fifth inning. One run, one hit, no errors. Nice scoop there by Kempf for the Crimson Tide to end that inning as the throw was a little low and Nice job there to get that bounce right off the turf. It looks like he got a future Crusader baseball player on screen. He's definitely got that natural swing down. Always good to see the kids out here. Beautiful Friday evening here at Sprunk Stadium. Picking up rocks. And top of the sixth inning, Tanner Ewell looking to close things out here. And like you said, keeping that pitch count low has been key for Jesuit, able to keep Ewell in for the entire game. If this score holds, it looks like the Crimson Tide will have this inning and one more inning to try and score nine runs to get the lead. So... Glencoe has got to get something started here. This being the second game of the three-game series between these two teams. Short hit there. Play to Colas. Fired over to French. Easy out at first. Bada bing, bada boom. Euland has really pitched a great game, allowing only one hit. He's really been on it since the start of the game. You have to admire this pitching. Kemper making it on base with both of his hits tonight. 
He'll look to do the same again. Ewan pitching outside. Another tough pitch just outside. 2-0 count, one out. I see some umbrellas coming out and some hoods coming up, so I wonder if it started to sprinkle here at Sprunk Stadium. It, and it held out for the majority of the game. Fans got to be happy for the most part. But, yeah, you look at the screen, and it's basically split half and half. One dark cloud, one blue sky. Definitely a little ominous coming. So hopefully this game can end before the rain comes. And walking Kemper. He'll make his third trip to base. Back on first. Close up on Tanner Ewan. Seeing, observing the play at first. Delivers a great pitch. Looking to finish things out here. 0 1 count, one out. With this 0 1 count, look for Ewan to throw pitches into the bottom half of the zone to try and get ground out for a double play. Another great pitch. 0 2 count. Great hit, play to second. Great play to second, made by Griffin Brandt and the tag by Tommy Muffler. Very athletic play by Brandt, not letting that one slip past, hitting the ground, adjusting his body to bring that one in and then tossing it over to Kemp. fantastic. Again, that's the second time tonight we've seen that from a Crusader, have the ball hit the ground and pick it up, those quick reflexes really paying off. Pinch hitting now for the Crimson Tide. Number three, Devin Jones. Great pitch by Ewan. Not seen as so as the count comes out 1 0. Two outs. Pitch inside, two consecutive balls thrown by Euland. Delivering a strike there. Nice pitch by Euland. Hit, deep right, brought in by Jay Sean Callen. That's the end of the top. Jesuit will come out at bat, bottom of the sixth. Likely the final Crusaders chance for at bat unless a eight run comeback comes for the Crimson Tide, so let's see if Jesuit can finish strong, get some contact, and get some base hits. Lots of fans here at the game for, for the Crusaders, as the rain has really started to come down here at Sprunk Stadium, so we'll see if the umpire looks to play this game out or maybe call it, but then again with the turf, it really, it's really an advantage because most likely we'll be able to play through it and finish off the game.
And looks like Garrett Pinster will be a sub at pitcher looking to finish out the game. Just get a fresh arm in there. And the rain really starting to come down. Looks like they're going to bring the team in. Are they calling the game? Is that what that means? It looks like... I'm assuming so as the rain is just, it's just dumping now here at Sprunk Stadium. So my assumption would be the game has been called, but they might just be doing delays. The Crusaders bring out the tarp to cover up the mound, so we'll see if they go into a delay or call the game. At this point, I think they just call the game. It's not necessarily close.
And after a slight de delay due to the rain, we're back in the action. The brand new pitcher, Pinster, at the mound. Tough first pitch. Didn't make it to the plate. That's a four pitch ball four pitch walk for the Crimson Tide by Pinster. Not the ideal start after that short delay. Puts man off to the Crusaders. Zero outs. Nolan McCarthy up to bat. The pitch is strike, a one count. One, one count. Ground hit from McCarthy. Delivered to second and a double play made by Glencoe. Only double play of the night. Good heads up play but there by the infield. Griffin Brandt steps up. Perfect pitch there by Pinster to get that ball down low in the zone to get it for a shortstop second to first. 6-4-3. Brandt with another hit. Grounded, doesn't make it to first. It's a quick three outs. That was a really good inning for the defensive side for Crimson Tide. If they had done that, got all those quick outs throughout the game, they might be in a better position than they are right now. As we head to the top of the seventh, that might be, this could be the final inning if Jesuit puts Glencoe away here, if Tanner Euland coming out to aim for the complete game shutout. Now either that or Glencoe is an eight run swing. Anything could happen. As we've seen all night, wouldn't be surprised to see a quick three outs here by Euland finish the game. Yeah, clearly, even though Jesuit made those adjustments to the infield and outfield, not skipping a beat. Still playing at that same tempo and skill level. Jacob Weiss at the plate. Two O count.
two one count. Ball. That'll make the count three one. Getting a hold of that one. Deep right. Jay Sean Callen quick to hop on the play. Tanner Ewan pitching a pretty great game tonight, only allowing one hit. I mean, you can't really expect more. He's had a couple walks. I think he had a hit by, uh, hit on a batter, but really a fantastic game here from Ewan. And that's mostly credited to his infield and outfield. They've had his back all throughout tonight, making incredible plays making him look good on the mound, keeping those numbers efficient. And like you said, those quick three outs, keeping his arm fresh, able to pitch through this whole game. The 0 1 pitch low for a ball makes the count 1 and 1 with one out in the top of the seventh inning. Great pitch by Euland. Not accessible by number six. Not listed on our roster. Pitch low for a ball. Makes the count two and two. Great pitch by Euland. Strikeout. Two outs for Glencoe. <coughs> and stepping up to the plate, recent sub at pitcher, that's Garrett Pinster. Crimson tied up with their last out of the game. They just were looking for a base runner here. Pinster playing the role of Katniss Everdeen, Glencoe's only beacon of hope. Bottom of the seventh. Top of the seventh. Top of the seventh. Two high pitches here for Euland in this at bat, so let's see if he can turn it around with a strike. Foul. Deep right. Spinster. Two one count, two outs. And that's Glencoe's final at bat. What a great game here for the Crusaders. Player of the game has to be Tanner Euland, who pitched a close to a no hitter as you can get with just one hit. So big, big props to him for pitching a great game. Good game for the whole Crusaders and good game for the Crimson Tide. Just gotta turn it around, get some quick innings, and get some wood on the ball and. They might have performed just a little bit better in this game. And one game remaining 
in the three game series, this only being the second. Jesuit walking away with an eight run lead and in the first game with an 11 to one victory. Teams will match up once again, but after a pretty beautiful game here at Jesuit, Sprunk Stadium, Jesuit walks away with another victory. Thank you for joining us, JCTV broadcast tonight. This has been Jack Taylor. Jack Foch, have a wonderful night.